long I have to clean this up before my wife gets home in a few minutes, but uh, the kitchen's kind of the only place that I have room to do this. So what am I doing? I'm cleaning and preparing the front grill. So the grill itself has a, um, you know, it's original. So it's 33 years old approximately. And um, it uh, was, you know, filthy. So I took a couple of hours with Q-tips and brushes and things and cleaned all the gunk off of it. And then what I've been doing now is, because um, I just realized that the surface in many places was blotchy and had some scratches and was worn and stuff. So what I did is I started treating it like clear coat. So I went uh, 1000 grit, 2000 grit, 3000 grit wet sandpaper and then I'm going to hit it with the Novus plastic polish. Um, and just sort of bring the surfaces up. Then I'm going to use a roller, like a silk screen roller, a little hard, small roller, and I'm going to see if I can very carefully roll the GTI red striping on the outside edge. And, and you know, I can do it with a brush as well. I could mask it and paint it, but with you know, spray it. But I think I'm going to be able to do it with. Um, with a roller, a couple of passes of a roller using the parasol. So yeah, the 3000 grit, it uh, leaves the surface um, you know, almost shiny um, and it you know, got rid of tons of blotchiness and wear and just sort of ugliness. Um, I'm not going to treat it with the, um, you know, the, vinyl, uh, the vinyl care, the Meguiar vinyl care until I've got it all painted up and stuff, but um, it uh, it's uh, coming to life, so I'm happy. The grill's important, obviously, so getting it super clean, getting it uh, sanded and prepped is um, a, a big step towards making the front end of the car look pretty. I want to get the lights in and the grill on and a bunch of stuff in the next little while, so I so thought I'd attack this one next. So I'm going to try my hand at uh, recoloring these badges. So. This is a reproduction front GTI, which is um, brought to you some, by some other VW Vortex members. I got an original, unmolested, new old stock GTI color sample uh, for the red. And this reproduction here is correct. This other reproduction here, which is sort of a later model look to it, later, later mark, you know, four or five, you know, where the colors get darker. Um, so I'm going to use my parasol uh, Verabond that's been custom colored in the lighter red and I'm going to try two different rollers. I've got a foam roller and I've got a hard rubber roller. So I'm going to try the hard rubber roller first, see if I can just roll across the letters. So the first thing I'm going to do is light 600 grit sanding, make sure I'm going to like clean off any release mold or any, any, any surface grease lightly sand it, clean it one more time, then roll it. So that's my process. Let's see how it turns out. Well, the answer is no effing way. Um, the foam roller, it gets, you know, it, it doesn't hold shape and it, it gets onto the side of the letters. The hard roller works, but the particular paint I'm using, the parasol, dries very quickly and you roll it onto the roller and it's already starting to dry you know, within maybe 15 seconds. So the, the amount of time you have available to, to roll it is really, really short. I tried it, it didn't go on very evenly. So super frustrating. Then I tried using, a, you know, a cheap uh, foam roller and uh, that worked. But then the surface is all blotchy. Um, you know, you're painting away and you're kind of getting it on. You're not getting it on super evenly and it looks okay until you dries and then you look at the surface and it's like it's got a little bit of a wave you can sort of see your brush strokes right so hmm I'm going to just buy some more of these badges and leave it at the darker red to the back of the car you don't have anything to compare it to unless you walk around to the front of the car and it's not a huge difference so I'm gonna have to live with it and I will be Clearly, to getting to get that color, I'm going to be spraying, masking very carefully the front uh, um, grill, and then and then spraying it.
because this this paint doesn't want to go on any other way. So I'm scared of this stuff. Maybe there's a maybe there's an alternative solution, but this what I'm trying to do here is a fail. Well, so for today, I'm going to I finished all the uh, sanding and uh, all the stuff. It's looking really good uh, for the front grill, and now I'm going to um, degrease the edge and uh, give it a light sanding again and mask it and shoot it with red so wish me the best of luck on this one well it's all masked off so I'm gonna spray it now so there it is uh, if some paint got underneath the tape which I'm sure some of it did then I can use some very fine sandpaper and sand it off and then polish it up again so I can get it to where I want it to be but I think it's going to be fine one way or another it's going to be good I'm happy well it's not perfect um, but it, I can get it perfect because um, there's a few areas where you pull the tape off and you get a little bit of a ragged edge and um, you know I'm going to have to just fold you know some 600 grit to 1000 grit sandpaper over the edge of a, a blade and just go through the edges and just clean them up. There's a few spots where there is some definite overspray that will take a little bit more work. Um, you know, there's just no way around it. This uh, I had to put it on thick enough to you know red covering black you have to have quite a few coats. I ended up with like six coats. Um, didn't want to put anything on too, too heavy all at once. But um, you know, once this sets up for uh, 48 hours, then I'll um, I can sand it. And I realize now that the um, this original album 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 um, this VW logo here is um, uh, was originally silver. There's little flecks of um, silver showing through. So I'm going to have to mask the whole thing off a couple days from now, and um, and spray that with the black plastic uh, paint, and then that'll match the rest of the grill nicely so um, yeah there's no other overspray I didn't get any underneath and behind or on any of these panels which is good just uh, fuzzy edges in a few places so yeah I'll get this thing trued up and then uh, get the logo mounted on it and it'll uh, be the real thing it'll be awesome so I'm now gonna just shoot the center in the uh, black plastic because it's as I said it was uh, silver originally and the paint that was used is coming on off of it so I'm going to get it cleaned up and then I'm going to clean up the edges in the red and this piece is done. Well, my wife's going to be pissed if she finds out but I'm going to paint inside because it's just miserable outside and I need some really good lighting. Anyway, I've got a little model spray system that I use for models and I'm going to do a little touch up on this edge here. I didn't get quite enough paint, it's a little bit sort of dark and I had to touch it up and when I touched it up the solvent from the new paint dissolved the old point so got to clean this up otherwise the whole thing looks really good it's uh, the only thing that's weird I did supposedly match this to this but they are not the same color this is much brighter and I prefer the slightly darker it may just be that I got more paint on I don't have quite as much paint on so the black is coming through a bit but this is also just a little bit more orange and I like this softer look so I'm gonna hand paint this with a foam brush and then sand it down until I get a smooth finish because the problem with this paint is it doesn't go on very evenly if you paint by hand it tends to dissolve itself as well so it's tricky so I'm gonna get some paint on this and then I'm gonna sand it down I did get uh, we'll see when it arrives from Greece but I did get quote unquote a new old stock um, version of this so again I'm gonna paint this and play with it anyway just because well why not I got another one coming so hopefully I can get this done before my wife gets home otherwise the shit will hit the fan I think well the little spray compressor and hand thing are just a thing of beauty probably should have used it to, uh, when doing the whole grill although it's really not a bowling production but it's just you can just you know put as tiny amount if you want on. It does a great job of atomizing as well. So um, yeah, I'll, uh, I've got these things both done. 
and I'll, once this dries in the next 24 hours then I can block sand it smooth and uh, and then I've got matching red and uh, yeah just a little touch up just a little little more red um, just it was just a little bit uh, uneven around this corner what happens is when this was lying down on the surface of the table and the air tends to push away so the spray pattern it's trying to get in there but the air it's pushing the paint away in, in fact so uh, not not great the way I had it set up on the table in the garage so that's why I didn't get quite enough paint on that edge check it out we have it done so yeah no it's looking great now everything matches color wise and the edges are clean and I love it so happy guy so back to the air conditioning um, I've changed a bunch of things so the receiver dryer is now hooked up using um, that's called reduced diameter bear hose so um, and I'm just using my um, my brake sorry my um, uh, my crimping tool for the um, um, the brake cables well, not the brake the, the, <laughs> the battery cables so it does this um, you know six uh, six sided crimp um, on the hose and then just this side I'm just using um, barb 516 so this is a number six air conditioning hose 516th um, barb standard uh, fuel line um, clamps and uh, you know these are these standard uh, o-ring fittings same thing here into the um, expansion valve so uh, just a little bit more uh, rugged and what's nice is I've been out for a couple of hours I, I put some uh, vacuum into the system and uh, it's holding the vacuum is, is holding um, so there's no more leaks in the system which is good I can charge it now um, this connector down here, this um, access port connector on the high side is leaky. And then I've ordered another one. They're like, you know, on eBay, they're just cheap, cheap, cheap knockoff things. So um, this cheap one seems to be fine, but this one's never even fit properly on the access port. So I don't need it anyway. You don't charge through the high side. You only charge through the low side. So um, we're, we're good. I'd like to monitor the high side and I can do that. I just realize it's got a tiny leak in it and when I take it off the leak is stopped. So I can charge the system up and um, got a bunch of these um, temperature sensors. got four of them so I'm going to monitor the input and output of both of the um, condenser and the evaporator and uh, be able to see the efficiency. Plus I'm going to improve my box design here and insulate uh, things and then I'm going to build a box around this side so that I've got both systems completely encapsulated so I, I can I can measure the efficiency thermal efficiency of the system uh, and see whether or not uh, it's uh, putting out enough BTUs of cooling relative to spec and all the rest of it and I've also got a current monitor so I can monitor the amount of current going into the uh, the motor and stuff so I can start benchmarking this thing accurately now. Okay, so what's going on here now? I've got um, all the leaks out of the system, and I'm currently on the low side running 36 pounds psi of, of um, pressure. I don't have the high side hooked up because I've got a leak that I got to fix in this um, connector here. So when that one comes, then I can monitor it. But it's not really important. Um, so what have I got going on here? So, four temperature sensors. Um, this is the air temperature in the center of the um, room. This is the output temperature of the air coming out of the evaporator. So it's about five and a half degrees Celsius differential. Um, so it's cooling at five and a half degrees C. So you feel the temperature here, you feel it there. It's just it's 18 degrees blown out of there. Um, and then these two. This is uh, 9 degrees is the temperature of the evaporator going at the, on the input side and then coming out at 16 degrees coming back to the compressor. And um, I've previously measured the temperatures coming out of the compressor and into the uh, condenser and 
I'm getting about a 20 degrees C temperature drop across this unit here. It's about 50 degrees C coming in, about 30 coming out, going into this, and then it goes through the expansion valve. Temperature drops obviously a lot, and then goes in. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to experiment with two things. Um, the most important is how much of the R134 refrigerant I put in the system. So I probably got it overcharged right now. I'm going to bleed it off a little bit and then just to see where the maximum efficiency of the system is. Um, and because uh, I'm suspicious that uh, it needs a lot less refrigerant than, than you might otherwise guess. So now you've seen the numbers here, roughly five and a half degrees C. Um, uh, temperature drop and I'm going to just drop the refrigerant level and see where it goes. I'll take it from 37 degree, 37 down to 30 and we'll see where it is and I'll go down to 25 and then 20 and then 15 and we'll see what it is at each setting. Well it turned out that I've tested it anywhere from, didn't have to go below 25, 37 is the sweet spot at five and a half degrees Celsius temperature differential so I was right on the uh, perfect setting the first time so went up as high as 50 as I said to, or down as low as 25 and as much as 50 and um, yeah it's about 13 and a half amps that's drawing at 13 and a half volts um, so it's about 160 watts that it's taking and it's providing around 350 to 370 watts of cooling so there you go. If I change the size of the um, evaporator or maybe cool the fluid a bit more with a bigger condenser, it might change the numbers. But I'm just going to measure the volume of air flowing out of the fan by capturing it in a bag and timing how long it takes to fill a big uh, garbage bag up. And that'll then allow me to run a pretty good calculation of you know, what the thermal efficiency of the system is and how much energy it's actually pulling out of the air. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, I adjusted the superheat by screwing this, uh, there's an Allen key, and I screwed it all the way in, which uh, makes the um, um, expansion valve open up a bit more in this particular configuration, and got another degree of cooling out of it, so six and a half degrees Celsius differential air temperature. And, um, now what I'm trying is because I realized that the um, I've been running the compressor a long time. It's really quite hot, and so I'm just trying to <laughs> use some ice to cool it down and see if that makes any difference. And also I'm going to just see if I'm making the uh, condenser more efficient uh, as well, whether that helps. So those are the two things I'm playing around with now, just to see if I can squeeze just a bit more out of the system. No, that's pretty much it. I mean I've I cooled everything down and um, squeezed another 0.2 degrees C, C out of it so a little under 7 degrees Celsius difference so see right now where we're sitting is um, air temperature 24.2 on the far right outside uh, you know the outgoing temperature is 17 and a half degrees so it's nice and cool the air that's blowing out and, um, and then the other two temperatures are the um, input and output of the evaporator so it's quite an odd relationship. As you put more charge in the system, it's flowing through. The volume of, of refrigerant is flowing through greater volume, greater mass of, 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 of refrigerant is being pushed through the system. And so the differential temperature across the evaporator sometimes is less than you would think it would be, but it's flowing a much, much more, so it ends up being more energy removed from the air. So. It's interesting, I can take the refrigerant level really, really far down and then the pump just stops you know, consuming current because it's not doing any work and then the uh, temperature at the, coming out of the um, thermal expansion valve will actually go negative, it will get down to like minus 2 or minus 3 degrees Celsius but it's just barely spitting anything out and uh, so when you crank the system up it's, uh, it's not getting as cold going into or out of the evaporator, um, but it's pulling more net uh, energy out of the air, as you can see, with a, a good six and a half degree differential. So I'm going to um, 
you know, run the calculation once I measure the airflow and, and see how close this thing is to being on the money. Yeah, the math works out. It's about 350 to 400 watts of cooling power. And um, so I've got the fan at full speed now, 150 CFM. So it's blowing medium high. And I got a 4 degree C, just over, just over 4 degree C. I'm getting 4.1 degree C. Uh, temperature drop across the evaporator as I'm getting a you know, 150 cubic feet per minute so it's changing the air out of the whole interior of the car every every 30 seconds uh, so yeah if it's uh, you know running uh, in the um, 30 degrees C range outside it'll be 25 degrees C approximately inside the car plus plus the, the thermal load of the, uh, the sunlight so we'll have to see how that uh, how that works but um, is it worth it by the time you've added up all the parts and all the labor and effort maybe you should step up to the next larger size compressor and spend it spend more money and get a bigger compressor but uh, I'm gonna go with this see how it works for me in the Pacific Northwest climate of uh, North America and uh, I think the science experiment uh, is over and time for um, you know put it in the car